guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today, we're going to take this image, color it, and then we're going to use the displacement effect on this image to produce this final image. So let's get to it. So to start off, I do want to cover a little bit about coloring the image. And I'm not one of those folks that can just come up with my own color scheme because I'm brilliant like that. but. PaintShop Pro in the Material Properties panel has the ability for you to select different types of coloring schemes. And I chose Tetrad for this to produce four different colors that have conceptually at least some relationship with each other that those colors go together. Having picked those colors, I could create my own palette. That way, it'll be really easy for me to access them when I'm using the Fill tool to color the picture. Part of why I picked this particular picture is because it sort of had that focal point on the left where it's the center of what seemingly looks like a flower. And my idea was to have that flower overlay and align with the right eye of the subject of the portrait. In terms of how I chose to color the picture, I really just wanted to focus on having some regions be more predominantly red and orange and other parts predominantly green and blue. That way there were very specific regions that the eye could focus on for different parts of the image rather than it just being a huge hodgepodge of color all over the place. So now let's move on to the image and I want to make one mention about image selection for this effect. Um, it really, displacement can be applied to any image with varying degrees of how well it's going to look. My recommendation from the experimentation I've done, especially if you're going to do something like a portrait, is have an image that has a very distinct key light or a single light that is predominantly casting all the shadows. And what I found is a soft lit image works a little bit better than a very harsh lit image, but it's really something that you'll want to experiment with to kind of figure out how the settings will play with it. But the settings I'll talk about later should apply for most images. So now in preparation for actually using the displacement effect, there's going to be three images that you really want available in your workspace. There's the image, which you're going to use as your project where you're going to combine all the layers and do all the cool effects. There's the flower, uh, drawing image that I just colored, which is going to be used as an overlay. But we're also going to need a copy of the face image because the, the displacement effect is going to need to look for an image to use as a reference that is not the image that you're actually working on. And you'll see where this will come into play when we go do it. So now that we have all of our images in our workspace, we can take the flower image, copy it, and paste it as a new layer into our working image. And then take some time to scale and align that image so that it lines up exactly the way we want it to. In my case, that's putting the center of that flower right over the subject's right eye. So now we can apply the displacement effect by going into Effects, Distortion Effects, and Displacement Map. And so here in the box that shows the reference image, that's where we want to select our face reference image, which is not the image we're working on, but the one we brought in. And now it'll apply that displacement effect the way we want it to. So let's take some time looking at some of the settings here. Uh, the ones I picked starting from left and kind of looping all the way around to the right side is I chose stretch map to fit image and blur set to 30 and just left that at a default. In the displacement properties, want to use 3D service in this case. Intensity really is something you'll want to play with um, to get the amount of effect you want so that it matches your image. Rotation is a little bit tricky, but if I were to provide my best suggestion for how that should be set, I would treat the dot in the middle of the circle as sort of an arrowhead and the line representing the tail of an arrow and you'd want that arrow to point in the direction of how your light is shining on your subject. So in my case, there's a very strong top light shining down. So having that rotation set such that the arrow is pointing down makes it match. Then finally, in the edge mode, I have it set to warp. I've tested this on the few images, especially faces, and it seems to work pretty well, generally speaking. 
After the displacement effects have been applied, the most common way of blending this into the original image is to use a burn blend layer. Now, in doing this blend with the skin tone of the photo of the girl, it kind of changes the color and I wanted to preserve the original colors from my coloring on the page. So by duplicating the original image layer and making it grayscale, now all the original colors come back. Having done this though, we need to now isolate the face from the rest of the image. So we're going to use the lasso tool, make a very coarse selection around the head, and then invert the selection and delete. We'll then clean up those coarse edges with the eraser tool. Whenever I do any kind of erasing in this case, there's always a balance of adjusting the hardness and the opacity depending on whether we're doing hair or skin. Hard edges or soft edges, basically. So now with the coloring page layer selected, we'll do the same thing. We'll use the lasso tool, invert the selection, and then clean up the edges. In retrospect, Using a mask might have been better because then we could have actually done this isolation once and affected both layers. But hindsight's 2020. So as I was erasing around the coloring page layer, I realized that it would be easier to really make that blend effect more correct if I could see it match the rest of the image with the same kind of contrast. So the next step, before finishing cleaning up that paint page layer is to adjust the contrast of the bottom layer to get the hair and the neck and all that to have a contrast that matches the level of contrast caused by doing the burn blend layer on the face. So I use the levels tool to get a first pass of contrast on the background layer. And then I realized it wasn't quite enough contrast so I followed that up with duplicating that same layer and changing the blend layer to soft light. And this in effect increases the contrast, but also naturally bumps up the saturation as well. So now with the background matching the face a little bit better, uh, we'll go to the contrast layer of the grayscale part so we can directly affect the contrast of just the face. Using levels once again. So now that we got the contrast about even for the sum of the picture, I can finish cleaning up the coloring page layer. Once again, adjusting hardness and opacity depending on what it is I'm trying to clean up. And in some cases you can see, like I said, because I didn't use a mask, I have to fix both of the grayscale layer and the coloring page layer. So now that we've cleaned up the edges around the face and blended it in with the hair, let's focus on the eyes because we don't really want the eyes to be overlaid with all these colors that doesn't really seem that natural and it also is a point of focus. So we really want the eyes to pop. So I'm gonna use an eraser and cut some holes there so we can work just on the eyes independently. Once the eyes are cut out to about what I want them to, it's very nice now because of the fact that there's no, it's fully, or it's fully transparent in that area that I can use the magic wand with the match mode set to opacity and can click in each of those spots to get a nice selection of just that region. So now we can create a new layer and then we can change the color of the eyes just by painting whatever color onto this new layer that we want. I'm gonna pick a color from this same palette that I created earlier so it can match. By changing the blend layer, we can get the detail of the grayscale layer of the eyes to come through. Cleaning up the edges around where the eyes meet the white just so that we don't get any 
fuzz or blurring of color there. And now to bring out the detail under the eyes, we have to adjust the grayscale layer because that's where the lightness values really come from. And once again, just using levels to kind of bring out that detail and make the eyes pop. So now for the most part, the image is done, but we'll add a new layer and add some vignette just to place more emphasis on the face, primarily even the eyes. Um, and not just the whole image itself. So the way I like to do it is by using a gradient fill color and the, the nature of it is just black fading into full transparency and creating it in a circular pattern. So with that gradient designed, I can just use the fill tool on this top layer and then change the blend layer type to soft light just so that it doesn't look like it's obscured image but just dark around the edges. And that's it. So we've covered a number of things in this tutorial, using color schemes in the material properties panel, uh, learning how to set up for using the displacement effect and actually what displacement effect settings we would use in this particular case, using the burn blend layer to merge it in. And then um, in my case, I wanted to use the grayscale layer just to make sure that the colors I started with, I got to keep. If you liked the warmness that was added by the skin tones, that's what you would, you would just skip that whole layer altogether. And then really it's just a matter of kind of cleaning up the image, getting the different regions to be a blend well with each other so you end up with a nice contiguous final image. Um, but that's basically it. I would definitely say that using the displacement effect is something that takes a bit of experimentation to really get a feel for how it works. Like I said, when I was discussing the settings, there's some general rules that can be applied, but it's really just a matter of playing with it and finding that sort of cause and effect for yourself. But in the end, I'm happy with how this image came out. I think the effect is pretty neat. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. If you have any ideas that you would like to have covered in any of future videos, go ahead and mention those as well. And if you'd like updates, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.